Okay, let's start. Um, welcome. Uh, this is DMM meeting in ITF 118. So let's start our meeting. <coughs> okay, please be aware of the interactive property policy in ITF. Uh, please take a look at the uh, displayed uh, IPR policy. I'll give you a few facts to view the content in the slide. All right, um, next is not well stuff. Um, so please be aware as well uh, for a uh, uh, IT, uh, ITF policy for uh, standard process, I working process, anti harassment and code of conduct, copyright, patents, private party policy. Okay, um, before we start for the agenda, um, I'd like to ask one of you to have a role of the blue as a note taker. If someone can prompt you. Oh, Tetsuya san. Thank you. Thank you for your volunteer. So we can start. You can find the uh, uh, DM meeting dead tracker site in this link, and we can you can find the agenda for today's meeting from this ring. So <clears throat> I'd like to share the working group status update. So we have documents in working group development process, mobility aware transport network slicing for 5G. We have presentation from John. And next thing is we have closed two working group adoption poll from the uh, uh, October 19th to uh, November 2nd. First poll is uh, draft corner EMM service mob architecture discussion. And second one is draft uh, design EMM map evolution. I'd like to summarize the uh, results of the uh, poll. Okay. Check, check. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so we have uh, one document which is um, comment requested. The, uh, regarding the impact analysis from IPv6 GTPU checksum calculation. So in the previous meeting, we have some uh, good feedback uh, from the uh, uh, one attendee, which is good to uh, input the other ICO, uh, CGPP, for example, to report the uh, current deployment status with the impact of the uh, uh, UDP checksum. So if you have any feedback, uh, please post the mailing list and some, uh, speak up on the mic. Okay, let me share very quickly for the results of the adoption poll. So first one is uh, SRBX mobile user plane architecture discussion draft. So I can see the good number of the uh, support for this draft. Thank you very much. And second one is the map evolution draft. So, so we have some discussion in the list. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to uh, provide our review from chair side of you uh, in next few slides. Right? The first one. Um, what I observe is um, the ANUP scope. So 
vulnerable comment said, Anup slowly address user plane convergence and try to liaid with CGBP, but I'm afraid this is a half baked attempt. So similar comment here is the Anup concept arise from the state in the land remain MMSM that control plane convergence um the limited for user plane would be quite challenging. The author rep replied to do replied that um, Anup does not limit the discussion solely for user plan. So it means the, the discussion being is including the control plane. So um chaired review with the current draft seem to include uh, inconsistent C playing discussion compared to what the author argues. So see the next slide. So what next issue I found is uh, C playing for mobility handover and paging a particularly important element in considering them, but this document does not attempt to analyze or solve the problem and just claim that they are the same as CP current behavior. So I couldn't find the uh, author's uh, reply, but I found the text in the draft. In the draft said, the uh, UE may have persistent IP address even when they re-anchor from one ANOOP to an another as described in section two of the uh, uh, 5D dis distributed U UPF draft. And in paging, the section 604 says they notice that because ANOOP is just the uh, integration of previously separated but co-located AN and UP function, the above, above paging procedure are not different from when AN and UP are separate. So chair's review is that the section two of the uh, distributed UP draft assume that SMF exists, um, which could contradict with a new proposal for simplifying signaling because the N4 is still required. In terms of paging, um, RNA paging over XN has no IP address info because it's RAM. So um, it, if it has, it is different uh, from the current. And it also assumed AMF exists after paging. It seems uh, to contradict with a new concept because the N2 still required too. So if ANF doesn't exist, it, it is different from the current. That's what Chair has observed. So the last issue is the, uh, um, the mobility stuff related to the previous issue. Unless you focus on the very specific case of the single PDN with no mobility private MEC or satellite to satellite, it seems a new project function is unnecessary at this point and crossing over into CPP territory, proposing to merge N1, N2, and N4 signaling will be an overkill to solve a very niche use case. The author's reply is uh, Anoop does not change that it does not avoid mobility handling, even if the proposal eventually does not get adoption adopted in CGPP, it is desired to DMM to adopt it based on rough consensus as a proposal based for a further study in CGPP. So Chair's review is, so when it comes to rough consensus, should it be pro probed by running code? A uh, similar comment I can find is the focus of the draft should be changed to address detail of the realizing a loop. So that's the uh, uh, issues uh, during the working group adoption poll. So um, uh, if you uh, have any feedback, uh, please uh, post the, uh, your comment to the list. But the adoption call is already closed, but uh, discussion would be uh, good to continue to um, on that uh, draft. I will talk with uh, AD for the uh, this working group uh, adoption call later on. Okay. Any question? Any 
I'm sorry? Who to what? Okay, of course. All right, uh, let's move on to the agenda. Uh, we have a uh, presentation here, the working group draft from um, the Mobility Aware Transport Network Slicing also, uh, John. So this is the Mobility Aware Transport Network Slicing for 5G. It's um, revision eight uh, based on a set of comments from one of the reviews. Um, I'll get into that the, in the next couple of slides. I'm sure I won't need 15 minutes, but I will try to explain what has been changed. So the main updates or other comments are related to uh, from a review from Linda, and uh, the question was whether 5G end-to-end -end network slicing is for the control plane or the data plane or both, and we've added clarification I'll cover in the next page. And also whether we see the app applicability of uh, this kind of transport engineering in the front hall network due to time sensitive nature of the network. Here, I think this is already covered in the draft and we replied I'm just uh, copying that over here to say that the provision slice capabilities in the front hall network must take care of the latency and jitter budgets of the specific slice for the front hall networks. In, in general, it's um, the general practice is you use layer two networks and uh, means of slicing based on that and the details are provided in the draft already. Um, I think Linda has accepted those comments also. Um, and then the question is, is the UPF to service destination path outside the scope of 3GPP? So here, I think it is definitely outside the scope of 3GPP. The scope of 3GPP uh, or the PDU session and the control and uh, data plane aspects are between the UE and the UPF. And it's about the slicing aspects with respect to the PDU session that uh, we cover. I mean, so that's the data plane aspects. And to the first question, you know, is it the control plane and data plane? We needed some updates to say that it does cover slicing as it applies to connecting control plane entities also. So I'll, I'll get into the details in the next page. So there was not much a significant change. We're just adding to say that um, uh, the, sli uh, the subnet that contains the network slice insists of the core network control plane functions, and we now make all of those additions there, SMF and NRF as an example, comma, whatever existed before it was user plane functions. And, um, and, and we give the examples of control plane functions, user plane functions, and the radio slice uh, uh, common functions. So now we have given examples to say what all are covered, but it is all only within the 3GPP networks and functions or functionality inside or between those functions. So that's the exact text that has been changed. Moving on, um, I think there was this, I mean, we've changed it slightly to clarify that it, it is only between the 3GPP network functions. That's the, in, in section four, the blue outline text there. And with respect to the, um, you know, let me just go back to the first page, I forgot. It is the UPF to service destination path outside the scope of 3GPP? It is, but there is a draft that is in progress in the routing working group, which is looking at employing similar concepts as in this draft. So for example, they're also trying to use the UDP source port um, as a means of routing be between uh, 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 the packets that come on a PDA session, then that gets routed to the endpoint. Uh, to the end server rather, or the other way around. So 
that's not covered in this because it is not part of 3GPP networking. It is. It could be used with any uh, network and and possibly also a connection that serves a 3GPP endpoint, but it's not restricted to 3GPP network itself. So we've referred to it here, and it's covered on, in uh, the routing working group under extension TN aware mobility. So they are using similar principles as in in this graph, but it's a it's a different problem. So it's covered there. Those were the updates in this graph. So pretty straightforward ones, and I welcome any comments uh, on this. I know I've got feedback that others have read the graph but not posted to the net. Uh, would you please post to the net to say if you have comments that we need to change or uh, you know have a discussion on the mailing list, or otherwise that it's all good also. Um, would appreciate more feedback. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, John. Any question, clarification? I have a question. Um, when I read the uh, uh, transport network technology section, um, of course, ITF has a bunch of the transport technology. So, um, but um, <clears throat> I couldn't find the uh, 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 good descri uh, description for uh, uh, PPR stuff. So um, I think it'd be still an uh, individual document, also it'd be uh, expired, but until the, uh, while the um, many uh, RFC published technology exist, why does the PPR exist in this draft? And also you have a, a review on the transport side as well. Um, um, that's a really good comment. I had this question to my co-authors as well. I think it's uh, left from legacy work that when we started writing this draft, uh, I think that needs to be addressed. I, I agree. Um, the PPR is one one thing in general. We're trying we're trying to do here is to not cover the underlay except as an overview. So I agree with the comment. Uh, that's something that we must look at to make sure that we do not pick the how that underlay is working. You know whether it's PPR or SRV6 or MPLS or whatever it is. I think the focus of this draft is how to map from the 3GPP domain to the the transport underlay, and I, I agree with the comment. We will look at it and um, uh, fix it. Okay. Thank you. Another thing is um, um, uh, UDP source port for uh, slice mapping. Um, do you have any um, implementation for that? Uh, we don't have an implementation, but. Um, my co-author, Uma, has worked on these kind of uh, technologies in similar applications. And he's used um, everything from that, including entropy when routing to make sure, sure that it takes the same path and all of those things. So I think uh, we have a fair amount of confidence that this will work in, in the 3GPP networks. Uh, Having hash for a um, UDP source, really different story compared to the the uh, trans uh, slice mapping because the exact value of the, the port number need to be uh, steered to the specific slice. It's be um, uh, something different. Uh, yes, I think uh, that is the problem. I mean, in terms of making sure that uh, you know the uh, whatever is in the header takes the same path. Uh, I think we have added some text to say that uh, you know entropy is maintained. But if we need, if you think we need to add more, then I think we can look at it. But I'll take the question offline and ask you for what's missing in there and try to update. Yeah, that would be good. Well, we, we think it's covered, but maybe the, some of the details are missing, and we'd like to get to the bottom of it. We have Q. Um... Takahiro-san. Yeah, I'm Takahiro Kato in KDDI. Thank you for your presentation. I have one question. Uh, can this method be applied to C print slice? I think the C print slice is also important. Uh, what do you think? I, what kind of slice? I didn't get A C print slice. C print. Control plane. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, for control plane, right? 
Yeah. Yes, I think it can be applied to control plane visualizing. I, I would think that this is what was clarified here that it, it can be applied to, if you read the, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle, I can't point, I think, or can I? So somewhere in the middle, you can see the, where the blue text starts or right before that. Um, I can read that out. A, a network slice subnet that contain network function instances of the core network control plane functions. Examples are SMF and NRF. It, it, it should also cover. Right. OK, thank you. The same technique. I think we. If we could have uh, some review from the transport expert, that would be good. And I um, think the text would be fine, but um, uh, is still space to polish. Yes, I agree with that too. You know, I, I have talked to T's who are looking at mm -hmm. uh, uh, slicing in general, like not just on this specific method. I mean, we have one method here, which forms a part of several other methods that can be used to realize these slicing. And um, uh, they have included this method as one of the methods among many for slicing. But I would, I agree with that. We need a feedback, an official feedback from them, more than offline discussions. You know, we which we've had. Yes. We'll ask okay. them to post. Come to Mike. so much for your representation. My name is Rude Shekhe. I'm working with Tunisian Telecom Operator. Please come uh, to cross, more cross okay. the mic. Uh, so the question is, have you any consideration about the private network? Because uh, with the uh, network slicing, we have also private network. Um, we have not specifically looked at private networks, but um, I, you know, but maybe that is something we can add in there. Uh, I would argue that the constraints in a public network are more difficult to realize in general, um, especially, um, you know, yeah. But if there are specific aspects that need to be considered for private networks, we can look at it or generally state that this covers both. But if there's something you have in mind, I can talk to you offline and see if there's any specific issue we need to cover, we can add that. But that, otherwise we'll add that this is intended just like it's for co uh, for control plane and user plane, we can add general text, but maybe I should discuss with you if there's any specific. Thing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. So next presenter is um, Ha Dong Hoon. So hello everyone, my name is Seung. So uh, I'm very glad to be presented today and I want to introduce about our work uh, about the computing where traffic steering use the, uh, the mobile user plane using the same routing. So as you know, in the current network, so we have the multiple cloud is uh, deployed on a different location and there are multiple service instance are deployed on the multiple cloud. And when the user are uh, connect to the specific service in one of the cloud, and when the service are uh, un as over utilization, over utilized, so it can happen directly to the user experiment. So the question is that, um, how to address that problem. So the user traffic should be transferred to be delivered to the, to the optimal X size beyond uh, both computing and the networking uh, metric. So that's why in the IETF, the CAST working group are uh, created to handle that issue. So our draft now is to apply that concept to the 5G networks and um, to answer the question about the how to come putting a wet steel traffic to the best service system. So review about the IETF, about the cast working group. So 
um, IETF CAD, CAD working group already proposed the CAD framework like the architecture here. So we have the CSMA um, CAD service magic agent, CNMA CAD network magic agent, CPS CAD path selector, and the CTC, the CAD um, traffic classifier. And about the CSMA is responsible for the collecting the computing magic for the service contact instance, such as the GPU utilization, GP, um, memory utilization, and all the maximum the maximum of the compute resort in the F size. So as same as the CNMA are for collecting the magic of the of the networking magic. And the magic are report to the C, uh, CPS for, and CPS is responsible for the selecting the optimal service contact instance by on the magic. And the final is the CTC is responsible for uh, mapping the client and the service contact instance and uh, how the packet can transfer along the same along the same path. So the, the question is, um, what are required to implement the CAD architecture in the 5G? So we have the two requirements. First is the CAD mobile user plane, and second is the interface between the CAD mobile user plane and the 5G control plane. So in the first requirement, we have uh, interview, uh, we consider about the LRV6 uh, as a user plan and the LRV6 MUP should uh, be uh, extend with the card capabilities. So how how to extend the LRV6 MUP with the card capability? So uh, we have the LRV6 architecture here with the LRV6 uh, move C controller, controller and the MOOC PE. So the MOOC C should enhance with the path selection based on the cast magic like computing and uh, networking the magic. And the MOOC PE can be enhanced with the cast magic collection and advertising. Another consider is the interface between the cast mobile plan and the 5G control plan. So we have the interface that, as you see in the figure, we have the 5G control plane. And then um, in the underlay network, we have the LRV6 network with the cast ability. And C1, C2, and C3 here are the move aware PG nodes. And we extend the move C controller like the cast C, cast move C controller with the integrate function line pass selection, pass setup, and the session info uh, transform. So when the UE requests the PU session establishment with the service ID, and the 5G establish the PU session, and then inform the card about that session. So the cast moves C controller will based on the um, cast metric and the Z node B location, and it can use a CPS function for select the optimizer service contact instance. After that, it set up the user plan by advertising the section transformed route type to the move piece. So our wrap um, uh, consider about the cast can, that cast can interwork with the mobile user plan using the same routing. So thank you for listening and. Um, we would like to hear your comment. Yo. <clears throat> Thanks for the presentation. Um, so my comment is that uh, you know this kind of interworking has been tried in the reverse manner in 3GPP, for example. A couple of years ago, there was a study on uh, edge computing, and it was a reverse perspective, which was 3G people would say where the compute should be. And that does not fly. And similarly, I think there are services that 3GPP provisions in terms of 
you know, complex aspects of how the radio works or services like uh, private networks, VLANs, a whole bunch of other services that are offered to the UE and the UPF. And, uh, you know, those are distinct, but I think now we're trying to sort of combine it in the reverse manner, and I think it's equally problematic. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you for having us today. Hello there, Tom Hi. Hill. I work for British Telecom and yes. <clears throat> Everything Everywhere, the mobile network. Um, as I understand this, the suggestion here would require that there would be an integration of this solution into a future 3GPP release. Uh, so can, can you speak louder? <clears throat> Sorry. Yes. As I understand it, yes. there would be the intention for this solution to be integrated into a future 3GPP release. Uh, yes. Yes. At that point, if they do wish to have the capability that you're describing, what is the requirement for this to be done in the data path? What are requirements for the data path? So to signal computing availability, why do we need to do that in the data path? Why do we? Why would 3GPP want to do that in the data path? Or would they want to do that in an out-of-band control channel? Uh, Signaling, say, via PCE or something similar? Actually, our consider is not change anything about the 3GPP procedure. And that says SRV6 is an N3 plus N6 underlay network. So the, the RV6 as a N3 and N6 underlay network are already proposed in the um, RV in in draft in the IFC 9433. I think the question is what's the impact on the 5G control plane now or future? Because the, uh, you put the SID uh, in for UP info from from the 5GC, it doesn't exist so far. So um, what what do you expect from the 5GC? The map is uh, basically is uh, no change to 5G. Yes, we don't intend to change the 5G uh, procedure. So we just need in here we just need the um, not B and the UE location for the for the cast move controller can detect where is the uh, UE location, and based on the UE location, so the cast move can select. The best, the best service instance, that's it, and we don't change anything about the uh, 5GC procedure or something. So none of the interfaces change, yeah. but you're informing them. Yeah, just inform. Hmm. Okay. That's, that's change. That's it. Uh, Require change. Uh, I think. Oh uh, yeah. Or we, I think we can do many things by, uh, sub, like subscribe, sub, subscription to the 5GC and getting that information from the 5GC control plane. Yes, I mean, it seems to me that if you have TE for any reason, traffic engineering for any reason, this is an addition to uh, the reasons for which you would perform traffic engineering. So existing traffic engineering mechanisms, yes. in theory, would be suitable. It is simply a signaling, you know, saying if you want this particular service at this address, it is over here. This has the most capability or capacity. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you for question, and I will consider it. Okay. Yes. Um, Kenji, China Mobile. Yeah, Kenji, uh, China Mobile here. Um, you know the things like uh, I think you just answered a uh, top question regarding how are you going to interact with the five GC, and then you mentioned two things. Yes. Um, one thing is that you mentioned like, oh, we just need to know the location of a UE, but that one itself implying you are going to interact with 5GC since uh, uh, you are going to go through like uh, the AMF, LMS, all kinds of functions in order to get those information for you, uh, for your CAPS uh, map. Cats map C, this uh, like a centralized controller to do the intelligent work. So that part is going to impact yes. with 5GC. 
means uh, you're going to change it. Uh, the second part on the second bullet on this slide is that, okay, 5GC established UEPDU session and it informs. Um, you know, that part is like, uh, I try to digest, uh, you know, this uh, single bullet with a uh, very extremely complicated process in 5GC about how a UEPDU session will be established. So from, uh, from my reading on this bullet, it seems to me during this PDU session setup, uh, the 5G is, has some way to interact with the one you just introduced called the, the CATS, the MAPC. In that case, that means they're going to change the, the 23.502 about the, the 5G spec and the procedure. So that is going to contradict with you, your description, but you are not, you're not going to change 5GC. So can you at least to explain the second bullet about that part? Uh, so, okay, so uh, thank you for questions. So um, we have the two solutions here. So about the service ID. So um, like, Uh, we just uh, request the after the 5GC as table in the UE period session, and we have the Z, Z not be test ID. We have all the period session information, and we just collect we just collecting it from the 5GC from the 5GC control plan, and then um, the Campus will do the another thing about the underlay network infra. Uh, okay, well, my suggestion is yes. you can read that one, how the PDU session will be select, uh, will be yeah. created. It's going to involve from your description here, uh, you are asking a lot of things from the 5GC to help with you. And oh. also the things like, uh, I can try to find a way for you to go through. It's like, um, after you are done with your PDU session setup, yeah. you may have, um, I use like AF influence and then that one, the AF can contact uh, or talk with your CATS map C, yes. such that CATS map C can do the AF based influential uh, selection. That might have some way with, uh, that might have some connection with your work, but it still it's going to change the 5G process. Yes. So yeah, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, can, I, can I, yeah. So uh, that's uh, your question is our pre our working, and I will show you. Uh, can you uh, open my new PPT? So I think the detail of the of your case is that uh, in this in this case we use the uh, 5GC and we have the both two way. When the for the campus C can apply for the 5GC about the optimized service concept instance, and this and this way can uh, change the 5GC by the traffic influence traffic to the 5GC control plane. So. Uh, we have the two cases. One is the PDU session establishment with a specific IP address. And in this case, we train the, everything we want to train the user plane traffic. So the cat C, cat controller will respond to the 5GC about the, that destination. So.
Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, uh, I'm Yuya Kawakami from SoftBank. I have a, just a brief comment. Yes. So uh, you are using the word any cat service video session. So please clarify what is that. So you are using this term is capitalized. Yes. But so uh, there is no other uh, Google result <laughs> about this word. So please clarify the what is this in your document. Yes. Yes. Thanks. I'm handling Nokia. As this is, is discussed earlier, discuss, discussion shows this a bit confusing also yes. to me. Yes. It seems that the main problem you are solving here is service contact instance uh, optimization or finding the service instance. And if, if that understanding is correct, then I don't think that this belongs to DMI working group. There is no mobility in, in this discussion other than you have this label 5G C there. That's the all what I see regarding the mobility. The rest is more of in the cats area. So maybe this uh -huh. whole document is in the series of cats documents, but there you might face the problem that they are not yet in the solution space where, where this document is addressing. Yes, thank you. Um, very brief comment. Um, uh, Marco Lieb, NEC. So traffic steering is an important aspect to consider and we had various very good discussion in DMM and also side meetings during the last two IDFs at least. Um, about this draft, I'm a bit confused about bringing CATS together with a 5G. So uh, CATS is a dedicated working group working on computer wear traffic steering. I had various things here like steering traffic based on UE location. So it's steering based on computing awareness, not on your location. And typically in 5G, you have an anchor point like a UPF, which represents the data plane anchor for the UE location, right? So um, that should be separate. So the past discussion we had on traffic steering, try to make the traffic steering discussion framework requirements, BCP, independent of a particular mobility system. So I'm a bit confused why you make CATS now specific to 5G on the 5G control plane and the, the data. So that, that's a little bit confusing for me. And I'm not sure if that should be the right way to go. And I'm wondering if the same aspect could be considered in CATS. I'm not following CATS in detail, but maybe it would be good to look at the use case, but without making it dependent on a 5G control and data plane, but look in CATS into the control plane and data plane aspects and maybe propose segment routing with the six as one, one solution there. So also confused a little bit why this is being discussed in India. Yes, thank you. I, I will consider it in the, in the next. Thank you. Hi, oh, Rashman from Huawei. Yes. Uh, another comment on top of what uh, my friends actually have already indicated is that you are making the assumption that SRV6 is an N3 plus N6 on the lay network. You cannot make really that assumption because the operators are free to choose whatever transport network that they want to use. So it could be MPLS as well, as as, 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 as far as we know. So, so that type of assumption is sort of like... Yes, yes thanks. I have one question. Um, from my reading, I think you expect some a uh, new type of the uh, load in MAP30. Yes. So what, what's the load of the, uh, the load you expected? Uh, we expect about the um, route for, about the more, more route for um, advertising the computing and the um, networking magic to the MOOC control plan. Mm -hmm. And the MOOC control plan can based on that for um, selection the best destination. Do you mean that the route to be adapted for uh, uh, the uh, CAT metric? Yes. Okay. Thanks. I think it would be better to describe that idea in the draft in your next revision. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I try to understand. Suppose uh, your architecture just work as uh, you have designed, and then you found uh, some uh, the best optimal location you want access, and then so from uh, 
you just uh, presented here, what is the relationship with the SR, SR V6? So why you introduce SR here? Uh, actually, uh, because the, we want to use a, a move, move, we want to extend the move, so the move use the SR as the underlying network, and uh, both in the cast working group, the cast working group still propose the SR as a one option of the underlay underlay network. So we just uh, propose SR, but it can be extended to the any protocol that having the tunnel encapsulation for steer traffic. Okay, so it seems to seem, <clears throat> so from your answer, it seems to me XR is kind of orthogonal from your draft itself. It's just uh, like some add-on, but it's orthogonal. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. This is John from Futureway. It's yes. Just a question for clarification. You see over there that it's one service ID to multiple IP addresses. Could we not use an Anycast address as a service address? Uh, one service ID to multiple <laughs> IP address here. Uh, can be the, um, it can be the any cat address or the unique cat address. So we have another. I mean, okay. if we're using an anycast address, yes. I mean the DNS resolution is probably going to for that service is going to give that anycast address. Yes. And then we don't need any interworking with PGP. That's what. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. yes thank you. I'm from, uh, I'm Shachan from Farmer, and I have a question is yes. that, uh, do you, uh, this, uh, the PTU session is uh, created for multi-services, right? One service uh, will have one PTU session, yes. right? But uh, now, is uh, the 5G can support this? Okay. Uh, can you repeat again? I'm oh, I want to know the 5G has has the interface to support uh, um, create uh, the one PTU session for one service. No, the PTU session is created for mapping the GUI to the one destination service IP address. Uh, no, I, I think, uh, uh, in my opinion, is that I, I know that the PTU station can create for a uh, net slice, one slice and path can have one PTU station. But now, you mean that you will create one, uh, one PTU station for one service, right? Uh, so in here, we, we don't consider any the slice. So it's like the same slide and we have the multiple Serve it at different location. Yeah, that our I, story. I, so. I, I know that. Yes. Uh, one service they has uh, have multiple locations. Yes. Right. I want to say, uh, the service or oh, I can have a lot of service. Yes. Right. Uh, a lot of uh, application. Right. So you will uh, create uh, uh, each PTU station for each application. Right. Uh, in here, I mean the same service in the multiple location. One yeah. service for the multiple yeah, location. Yeah, I, I know that. And, um, mm. But because you you said you create the PDU station with service ID, right? Oh, yes. So service ID, because when I have multiple services uh, deployed in the, uh, uh, the uh, MEC, all right? Yeah. So multi multiple services, each service you will use the CAS, but uh, I want to know when I have multiple services, you will create the PTU station with the service ID, and the service ID uh, can can be carried by the how to say five G interface. I think. Um, it's not, not necessary to create the path session, uh, path service session. I think one PD session could be applicable for uh, multiple service because the uh, breakouts be ab ab available in the 5G. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> Can you oh. 
your question is uh, why the uh, this draft as, uh, assume the uh, power service session creation? Is I that, just uh, want to ask uh, the is the five G interface has the uh, parameters with uh, to carry the service ID mm -hmm. because when you have multiple services, you will use different uh, service IDs, right? Yes. So, so but I think, yeah. uh, I don't know, 5G can have, uh, yes. now it's Thank you for, can have because um, we have the two, two options. In the 5G C, they can know the, what is the service ID. Uh, the service ID is outside of the 5GC domain. But in our purpose, we assume that the 5GC already addressed that service ID and know about that service ID and um, just send, send the preview session establishment with that service ID. Oh, I can uh, oh, start okay. with you. Okay, yeah. so later, I can, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next presenter is uh, Yuya. There you go. Hello, uh, I'm Yuya from SoftBank. So today I'd like to introduce our new proposal about uh, SRH reduction for SRV6 and MDTP6E behavior. So here's the background. So now RFC 9433 defines the SRV6 map, SRV6 mobile user plane, which is inter enables the interworking between the 3GPP uh, mobile user plane and also the SRV6 transport network. Then, so so this draft, uh, this RFC defines the translation between the GTPU and the SRV6 in the stateless manner. And here is a two additional draft about uh, related to this uh, SRV6 map. And the second one is the SRV6 map architecture, which is defined the control plane to enable the uh, SRV6 mobile user plane. And uh, the third bullet, uh, base MAP SAFI defines the BTP SAFI, new SAFI, to, for the control plane of the SRV6 map architecture. So here is a diagram to how to the packet is forwarded to the mobile network and the SRV6 based transport network. So the GTP packet is translated into the SRV6 packet and the vice versa. And so today, so we like to focus about the uh, MGTP60, which is um, translate the uh, SRV6 packet into the GTPU packet, which G not B address have an uh, IPv6 address. So in, uh, to, to, before the moving to the, uh, uh, this behavior, so uh, let's recap the, about the MGTP4E behavior. So in this behavior, so we use uh, we we need to know the IPv4 address of the G node B. So we um, store this IP address in the seed. So uh, in, in, uh, <laughs> in that so if, uh, A uh, shows the IPv4 address of the G node B, and also we uh, need um, arg mob session, which is uh, used for the restoring the QFI and the TEID. So we can utilize uh, all 128 bit of the IPv6 and uh, we can enough uh, other space, bit, bit space to store the IPv4 address and the uh, uh, argmob session. But for, in the case of the Zenobi have a IPv6 address, so we need uh, more bits to restore the IPv6 uh, GNOB address. So in this end mgtp 6 e behavior, so we need the two seed to restore the full uh, information, IPv6 
genome address and also the TEID and the QFI required to restore the um, GTPU headers. In this case, so ingress P, MAP P2 in this diagram pushes the two SR headers at least. Then the MVP one, so we called uh, SR gateway in the previous uh, RFC and the draft, uh, needed to restore the IPv6 destination address from the seat zero, and also restore the D, uh, inf required information for the DTPU header, like a uh, uh, TEID and the QFI from the seat one. So this behavior is very, very hard to implement in the current uh, hardware pipeline on the routers. So uh, we like to propose a new behavior to reduce this um, hardware unfriendly <laughs> behavior. So we just put uh, one seed to destroy the uh, IPv6 address and uh, GTPU headers utilizing the SRV map controllers control plane. So in this case, so we, we need just one seed to restore the GTPU header and the IPv6 address. So MVP2 ingress P for the downlink just put uh, IPv6 header. The destination address is uh, this behavior the seed. And then so MVP1 um, restores the uh, IPv6 address and the GTPU header from this just one seed. Uh, here is a little bit complicated, but uh, this is a behavior of this seed. So here the G G node address, so who have a uh, 128 bits. So we utilize, um, uh, in the case of the rocket and the function have a 64 bit. So our small session requires always uh, 14, 40 bits. So here is a reminder bit have a uh, 224 bits. So we put uh, um, the tailing 24 bits of the gene address here. And then, so we create a static uh, dynamic mapping table related uh, between the locator and the function and also the gene address the prefix. But always, so IP, in the IPv6, so we are using a 16 for as a 64 prefix for the IPv6 network. So we need to expand so the prefix to be advertised into the uh, 104 bits. So then, so P2 just push uh, this seed, and then so P1, uh, egress P, uh, receive this seed. And then, so uh, he looks up the, this table and gets uh, 104 bits prefix of the genus address. And then, so they uh, he uh, combine the reminder bit yellow field and the blue field, and then so he can restore the IPv6 complete address. And also the GPU header is restored from the August mob session in the same manner in the previous uh, former behavior. So here's the deployment options. So there are the two pattern, classic, using a classic seed and uh, using a micro seed with the format 32 and the for 16. In the case of the classic seed, so we use a 32 bit locator blocks and the 16 uh, locator node and the 16 function and the 40 arc small session. So we need a 104 bits. So then, so we advertise uh, prefix is a slash 104. In the case of the micro seed, we use the 32 locator block and the 16 locator node and functions. Then, so we need always uh, 40 bits for the Agsmo session. So we require 88 bits for the prefix of the uh, G node B address. So at the advertised ramp IP prefix is slash 88. Uh, so I'd like to ask it, uh, this community to uh, have about uh, uh, some feedbacks and advice and suggestions in this uh, proposal. But I have already received uh, one feedback from a community uh, individually. So they advised me so that you, you, you should change the bit field 
from the Agus Mob session and the reminder base. So because so I uh, arrange this uh, order of the bit field based on the current and the end of DTP4, uh, sorry, <laughs> end M.DTP6E. So just utilize a reminder zero padding bits uh, to store the Gino B address. But so in statistics then shows the uh, uh, after the locator and function, so the reminder bit is following, and then so as mob session is here, the tailing. In, in this case, so um, information which is needed to restore the IPv6 destination address is uh, in front of the bit, and then so uh, the mob session is a um, tailing side. So it is very familiar to implement in the hardware. And so here is a result of the hackathon. I just put a um, VPP implementation here, and uh, you can try in the virtual environment. <laughs> and thank you. So I'm welcome to your comment and the feedback and suggestion. Thank you. Hello there, Tom Hill again. Um, I have some questions. Yes. Actually, the the last slide was 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 quite useful as an illustration. I think that one there. Yeah. Okay. It looks more efficient because, in theory, potentially fewer bits to pass and to forward. But is the action of separating the destination address more efficient than simply pointing to the SRH? And did you test that? So sorry, um, I, I couldn't get the point. So in this situation, when using micro SIDs, you are hiding effectively the SID in the destination address yeah. that you would normally use. Is it more efficient to read that in and split it out versus doing that operation and pointing towards the SID SRH block in the SRH block. I mean, this, this, these are questions that I don't think have been answered yet reasonably. There's an assumption that if we take away the SRH, there's fewer bytes and it's better. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure that the actions and indeed some of the more complicated options that are available within micro SID sound incredibly complicated. Hmm. So as much as this is a very simple use case, Along those lines, I am deeply concerned that it's it's touted as being more efficient and friendlier to hardware, but it's not actually an operation that they're commonly doing. Yeah. So that that worries me. Second problem is UCID isn't standardized yet, so there's no RFC. Yes, 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 yes. So it could change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Right? yes. laughs> so that's important. Um, and I think the third thing, and the, this is this relates to a draft that we have in Interior, um, Trusted Domain SRV6. There, once you take away the SRH in this case at the moment, there's no real way to differentiate it from IPv6. And that concerns me deeply as someone who has to build secure networks. So, I mean, perhaps if you haven't seen the draft, if you'd like to take a look at it, we can always talk about it. But I would say that, and, and if there's a, a more appropriate way than an ether type within this context to be able to differentiate SRV6 and IPv6, I'd love to talk about that. Uh, thank you for comment and the suggestion. So, um... I understand, so the micro is not yet standardized, and uh, now we are uh, going to find how can we SoftBank deploy the, this um, behavior and uh, it's a basic network. Okay, thank yeah. you. I'd like to uh, discuss it among the authors. Hey, uh, Suresh Krishnan. My voice is not very good, but I think what Tom was trying to ask is the compromise between the space and the processing. Huh? I think if you can just give measurements for that, I think that's what he was asking for. Yeah. Because it makes it shorter, but it does different operations. I think it's a fair ask for that, right? And I, I like it, but one question I didn't um, get the answer from, I read the draft, uh, is that the, how does advertisement work, the, the longer prefix? Where, what protocol does it use to send it? Um, so you, you're asking the, the one of four protocol. Thing, where does it go? Is it on a RAN signaling something or? Uh, so the SRBX map architecture draft defines a 
uh, ISD route, okay. interbox okay. segment route. Okay. So okay. P1 uh, advertise the uh, ISD route with this seed prefix. And then so here is a type one uh, session transformed route for map controller. So then P2 can combine this information and create, he can create uh, this seed. Okay, got it, thank you, thanks. Thank you. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have done all the agenda today. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Um, see you in Brisbane.